you speak about um, getting into the music industry and going in, in, into New York. Like, um, how did you get your first big break? Did a label reach out to you or did you kind of just move up there and try to connect with people? Um, I made a choice like not to move up there, partly because like I just figured it was like way more co like it's so expensive to live there and your style of living if you don't have money is like is not not what's up, especially in North Carolina, what you can get, you know, for rent here. So I I decided, you know, I'm just gonna buy a plane ticket once a month and go crash with family or friends. So I just what I did for like a couple of years. I just went once a month. I told everyone I'm here. Did all my meetings, and then um, I and it actually worked to my advantage because people are like, "Oh, we got to catch them now," you know. Unless I was like living there, I don't think it would have been as um, productive actually. Because I came back to North Carolina around the trees, space, you know, and then made made all the music, and then went back up and shopped it. So, um, I, you know, back to your question, my first big break was winning the the beat battles in New York City in front of the music industry. Um, Fat Man Scoop was actually the first like real industry meeting I had. Um, so one of the someone connected me with him because they thought you know my style was so hype. You know, winning these battles it, it would match him. And um, then got a manager like I, the kind of the world opened up to me. It was almost like winning American Idol when I won this beat battle in New York. It was like a really big beat battle with eighty producers from all around the world, the best of the best. Blah blah. blah. I won the whole thing, and so. That's when it just opened up. I got this, you know, manager, and um, yeah. So I'm not sure what that, that's. That's where things broke. I mean, my first couple placements ha happened to actually be with um, people in North Carolina, like uh, Camp Low, lived in North Carolina. Ski Beats was someone I met during this process who who lived in North Carolina at the time, and so um, yeah, getting some placements with uh, Camp Low, and um, one of Ski's artists, Pittsburgh Slim, and then. Then Wale and Most Def and everything else came after that. So, wow, wow, that's amazing. I mean, that's a pretty good idea. I never heard nobody because usually you hear the stories about people, you know, spending their last dollar and then they move to LA or they move to New York. But like you say, you just set it up where you can go once a month or whenever you can get up there and take care of all your business and go right back home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Um, now I was watching another interview. Um, now you lived in Europe. Is is this before, after, or kind of like during the same time? Uh yeah. So it was, I wouldn't say like I live. I have I haven't like really. Well, I did live in Europe. I lived in Scotland uh, when I was in university, and then ended up going uh, back and forth to Scotland a whole bunch uh, for like the next ten years. Yeah. So I got real influence. Uh, that's when like drum and bass and house music and all sorts of stuff was popping in Scotland or Europe in general. And over here in America, like that was just not, not was not what people were trying to hear. It was either like rock or hip hop, basically. Like if you went to, um, if you listened to house or electronic music, you were like a really weird person that put like face paint, and went to some all night rave or something like that. So, I mean, now it's really normal, but back then, I was like, this is wild. Normal people just go listen to house and drum and bass in the clubs, and that's what they do over there, you know. So that that ended up, I think one of the biggest reasons I actually won these battles, these beat battles, and popped in the industry is because my influences were coming from like, yeah, that European style of dance music, also from like the 80s and 90s rock and roll music, where I saw everyone else was getting influenced by like 70s soul music. It was like everyone was influenced by that only. And then I was influenced by this, all this other stuff. So my beats just hit in a whole different way. And so I was, I, I knew that was a difference I had. Plus being a drummer, I could put a little like drum solo in something, you know, in the, in the middle of a beat, just a little bongo break that I just played myself, you know? So I think those, those things set me apart. And that's what, that's what ended up being the difference.